Hi, I'm Jeffrey Way with Touch Plus, and in this lesson, let's talk about modular CSS. Now, admittedly, there are plenty of front-end frameworks that are available to you. However, sometimes it can be preferable and educational, at the very least, to build your own so you can understand exactly what goes into this process and where the benefits lie. So, as such, in this tutorial, we will explore how to use both SAS and the BIM methodology. And if you're not familiar with BIM, that stands for Block Element Modifier. And you can read more about it at BIM.info. Having said that, if you do visit this site, you might feel a little bit overwhelmed. But don't worry, I'll try to simplify it as much as I can. Mostly, though, BIM was designed to help modularize your front-end development. So it's a set of guidelines and best practices. Now, what we will do in this lesson is design the beginnings of a custom, well-built framework. Now, additionally, we will be using SAS. Just keep in mind that I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of SAS. If not, I really do recommend you take a weekend and learn it. You're going to love it. And in the case of this lesson, it's really going to be required if you want to build well-structured modular CSS. So let's go ahead and dive in from scratch. I'm going to create a project, and we will just call this lesson, and CD into it. All right, if I open up my editor, let's just play around for a moment. What shape might this take? Well, if we want to use the BIM methodology, it might look something like this. Let's assume something like an unordered list. Well, we would give it a class, and we're going to follow a very specific convention. And you might have seen this around the web. Let's give it a name of list. That's all fine. However, for the list items, we could give those classes as well. However, notice what shape this will take. We will call it list underscore underscore item. And then we will give it some text. So notice this convention we are following. Now, what if we want to override it? We want to add some kind of configuration, so to speak. Well, here's an example. Often your last or first list item may need to be styled differently. So let's override this. We will call this list item, but then we will extend it with list item dash dash end. Now, if you are anything like I was at first, this is going to look incredibly foreign to you. All right, so we have a name and then we have underscores and then another word and then dash dash. What does all of this mean? Well, we are following a specific convention to allow us to code our CSS and think in terms of objects and modules. So what we see here is that the unordered list has a block class, notice that keyword block, while each of the list items has a class of list underscore underscore item. And then finally for this last one, we override the default block. So essentially when it comes to naming, it's going to follow this convention. We have our block name. Next we have underscore underscore the element name. And then finally, if we have a modifier or an override or a configuration, any way you want to think about that, you're going to do dash dash, like so. So if you're still very confused, that's okay. Let's dig in a bit more. Let's go ahead and set up a little project here. If I exit out, we will begin by creating two directories, just one for our assets and one called static. So our assets are where we will store our SAS files and our modules, and the static folder is where the compiled output will be placed. So let's go ahead and do that. Make directories assets and static. All right, now if I view the tree, we can see within this project, all we have is two folders. Next, we need to make sure that we have SAS installed, and we're not gonna cover that in this lesson. However, I will assume that you have it set up and installed on your machine. Now, the first thing we wanna do is set up a watcher. So maybe we want to watch the assets slash SAS directory. Let's go ahead and create that right now. Assets, SAS. And now we can say SAS watch, and we will look over that SAS directory, and that will compile down to our static directory, and how about the CSS folder? All right, that looks good. We now have a watcher set up and ready to go. Now, the first thing we wanna do is set up a base SAS file, and this is where we can handle any variable assignments, we can import all of our partials or modules. This is a fairly basic thing. So I will go ahead and open up my editor, and within the assets SAS directory, let's go ahead and create screen.scss. Think of this as your master file and also that base file that I talked about, base.scss as well. Now note that I am using an underscore here 
This is a way to signal to SAS that we don't actually want to compile this file. It's a partial that will be imported elsewhere. So now at this point, only screen.scss will be compiled. Now, if we switch back to our other tab, we can see that SAS picked up on that and it's already compiled our screen file. Now, within our base file and following that BIM naming convention, we could do something like this. Let's create some variables here. How about four colors? So we could say color, and now we are going to specify our element. So color is the block, and then we will say for our primary colors, this is going to be the element, and then dash dash light will be our modifier. Let's set that to something like DD0000. Let's now do another one, color, primary, and there will be no modifier in this case. We'll set that to just a slightly darker shade of red. Now we need one more accent, and this will be for a darker version. So primary, and now we add a modifier for dark. And that'll be equal to, how about 990000, just a darker shade of red. So hopefully this is beginning to make sense. You specify your block, then the element, and then the modifier if there is one. What else could we do? Well, how about things like font sizes? We could say our block is called base, and then the element will be font size, and we will set that to 15. Lastly, let's do one more. How about base and the line height? So the element name will be line, and we will set that to 20. Now, the next thing I will do is add default here. So what exactly does this mean? Well, default allows us to assign variables if they aren't already assigned. So basically, what this keyword means is, if the variable has already been assigned, then don't reassign it. However, if it doesn't yet have a value, then give it one. Pretty simple stuff. So I will go ahead and add this to all of these here. Like so. Next, what else might we put within our base? Well, you could have functions. Maybe you need some kind of function to convert pixels to M's. How might you do that? Well, let's create a SAS function here. Why don't we call this M? And this will accept what the pixel value currently is. And next, it'll accept the base. However, we will set a default equal to base font size that we declared on line five. All right, that looks good. So now within the body of our function, all we will return is our pixels divided by the base, and then we multiply that by one M. That is the formula for how we convert pixels to Ms. All right, so this looks pretty good. However, what if you and your project need to override the defaults? Well, let's just create a file called config.sass, and that's where those could be placed. Now, I will leave this blank for the time being because I'd like to focus more on screen.sass. Now, screen.sass is sort of our master page. This is the file that's going to import all of our partials, or like I said, you can refer to them as modules if you want. So for example, we of course want to pull in the base that we created, so let's do that. Import base. However, upon saving this file, it looks like we have one error. So let's return to base.scss, and it looks like I just forgot to add the semicolons as well as the closing paren. All right, if I come back, now that's working, so we're all set to go. Now we've imported our base, let's go ahead and import our configuration file. This is a good way to go about it. Rather than asking SAS to compile multiple files, we are instead using one master page, and we are specifying our imports here. This gives us an easy way to, so to speak, turn off and on various modules, because we have one master location to configure it. The next thing we want to do is create a directory for all of our various modules. So within the SAS directory, let's create a new folder and call it modules. This will house all of the additional modules that we add to our application. So for example, what might a module look like? Well, you likely know about resets. And if you use SAS and you likely use Compass, then you can just pull in a reset out of the box. However, if you don't, well, maybe you could create your own reset module. Within this folder, let's create that very thing, reset.scss. And now if I open this up, here's where we can paste in a reset file, any reset that we want. In our case, why don't we just paste in something like normalize? Now that we've created this new module, we just need to import it. Import modules slash reset. Now, if we were to open screen.css, we can see everything's working exactly like we want, but now we have this nice master page to contain and import our modules. So hopefully you are beginning to see what shape your workflow will take.
Here's some other ideas. Maybe we will have a module for our text. So let's go ahead and create that. Within this file, you could have things for your heading one, your heading two, your heading three, etc., etc. So for example, because we have the mixin that we created in our base file called M, we can make use of that. We could say font size equals, and let's say we want to convert 36 pixels to its M counterpart. All right, that's done. Let's go ahead and see what that comes to. I will import that, module slash text. And now if I open up screen.css, at the very bottom you can see 36 pixels converts to 2.4 Ms. Nifty. Let's go back. Next, maybe we want to set the font family. Well, we could do it like this, like you might be used to. We'll set a default of Helvetica new, and then we could fall back to sans serif. Maybe we also want to set the margin bottom, but we also want to convert that to M's. Well, let's set that to 10 pixels, margin bottom. However, we want to set the base equal to our font size. So we will override the default and specify 36. Once again, if we save this and then we open up screen.css at the very bottom, notice how so much of the work is being done for us because we created that helpful function. However, once we start doing the other headings, this can be a little tedious. For example, let's just copy some of this, and whenever we copy, often that's a dead ringer that maybe you could structure things a little bit better to dry it up. But let's continue on with H2. Well, we want to set our font size, how about to the M's version of 24 pixels. We will keep the font family like it is, and maybe for the margin bottom, we want it to be 15 pixels margin bottom, but using a base of 40. And while we are at it, let's update this as well. Next, what about colors? Well, we could add that here, and we could reference our default value, color, and we want to reference the primary color that we set up. That looks good. And we could copy it down here. So now, once again, if I go back to screen.css at the very bottom, we are referencing that red color. However, notice all this duplication. Maybe we can clean things up a bit. How about at the very top, we add a mixin? We will call this mixin text, and that will accept a size, the line height, the margin, which we will set to a default of zero, the font family, and once again, we will set a default of that, and that will be something like text, family, sans. We will create that variable shortly. Next, what about the color? Once again, we can set a base of how about text. Our element will be color, and the modifier will be base. Finally, what about the weight? Let's set that to a default of normal so that the user doesn't have to specify that if they don't want to. All right, that looks fine to me. Let's go ahead and create those two variables. Text, family, sans, and let me remember to add the double dash here. Now, here's where we can set our base font. So once again, let's go ahead and set it, Helvetica new, with a fallback to sans serif. Next, for the colors, we could set text, color, and then our base, and that'll be 333333, just kind of a dark gray color. And once again, I'll say default so that we don't override it if it already exists. Now, how will this mix in work? Well, all we have to do is take those values that we provide and then set the values here. So for example, we could say take the font size and convert the pixels that are passed in to M's. Done. Next, what about the margin? Well, we could say margin bottom. Once again, convert the provided margin to M's. Let's just make sure that we set the size as the context. Next, we need to do the line height, so line height, and we will make this equal to the line height divided by the size. Pretty standard stuff. What about the font family? Let's do that as well. And then lastly, we can set the color. All right, I think that'll be enough for this mix-in, but now we can clean this up considerably. For example, rather than doing all of this stuff right here, we could instead replace it with include the text mix-in. For the size, let's just reference our base font size. Next, we will reference our base line height that we specified. And then finally, we don't want to override the margin or the font family, so let's just specify that the color that we want should be text, color, base, that we defined on line two. Finally, we do want the font to be bold, so we will specify weight should be bold. Now that we've specified that, we can remove all of this, and any of our other headings can be cleaned up as well. Now, it's always a good idea to see if you made any mistakes, and if I switch back, looks like we did on line 13, and we can see I just forgot to make that font size instead of using the modifier, 
and it looks like everything is still working. So if we check out screen.css, notice our mixin is working perfectly. Great. So now let's update the H2 as well, and then I will let you do the rest on your own. Once again, include the text mixin. We will specify 24 pixels as the font size, or once again, you could store that within a variable at the top of this file. It's just a matter of how much configurability and flexibility you want. For the line height, we will set that to 28. The margin can be 15. And then we will set the color equal to 990000. Once again, you could store that within a variable if you want. So you could say text color, and you could use some kind of convention like beta, like alpha, beta, gamma, delta, stuff like that. So we could store that up here, like so. And now on line 18, we can just update the color to reference that. Text, color, beta. You get the idea. And I think that'll be fine here. So we can delete these. And once again, if I switch back to screen.css, now we've saved ourselves a lot of time by creating this helpful mixin. Now, if we wanted to take this a bit further, we could do things like specify the HTML as well as the body. So for example, for the HTML base, we could set the font size equal to, and we could say our base font size times one pixel. Next for our body, once again, we could include the text mixin, and let's just specify the base font size, as well as the base line height that we specified. And let's keep it like that. So that's a good starting point that you can finish on your own. And then for other things, for example, maybe you want to create a module for your lists. Well, you could create that, list.scss, like we covered at the beginning of this lesson. And we could do things like for the list block, why don't we set a padding left on that, equal to convert 10 pixels to their M's counterpart. And then we could say dot list item. Now notice that we are doing it like this while you might be used to something like this. Well, that works and that's very cool. However, very quickly that can be abused and that can add a lot of weight to your applications, to your CSS, because of the way SAS compiles to CSS. So be careful with that. Instead, we're gonna use this approach. Once again, just to drill this in, we have our block and then we have our element here, which is the item. And in that case, we will set the margin bottom equal to convert 10 pixels to M's. Finally, what about that modifier that we set up? List, item, and now if we need a modifier, and think of a modifier as like an option. If you've ever used a console command where you wanna specify some option when you run it, this is the same idea. So in this case, I think we had end, and we can just set margin bottom to zero in that case. Just remember though, whenever you create a new module, be sure to import it, modules slash list. Now, once again, if we go back to screen.css at the very bottom, we have our new list module. Now, let's do one more thing with this, just to drill this in. What if you need some other kind of option? For example, what if you decide that the default list will not have bullets? List style is none. All right, but now you wanna add an option to enable that. Well, we could just say list, and now for its modifier, bullet, in that case, we will set the list style equal to bullet. Also, maybe in those cases, you wanna update the padding left to be something a bit more, maybe 25 pixels converted to M's. So now that we have this block, you could create an index.html file, and you could create your UL like so. UL class equals list. You add your list items like we did before, list, item, all basic stuff there. However, if you instead want this list to have bullets, you override it. So you add another class here, and this is how we think in terms of objects, rather than just throwing everything into a class, which has the side effect of making it not reusable in the least. So now we could say list bullet. You see how that works. All right, and I think that'll be enough for this video. So hopefully this will get you started. However, if you wanna take this further and see it through, be sure to read Matt Hayward's full article from Net Magazine. Also, if you'd like to view the full source from Matt's article, just visit github.com slash matthaywarduk slash simple sass framework. Have fun.